Elizabeth Ruiz taking a closer look at the voice of the black community this election. We're actually at one of the polling locations before they close here shortly in Charleston, South Carolina. Now, what we've been told, there's not a, a lot of people here. And in fact, there aren't a lot of people at any of the locations because there have been a lot of people who have been voting early. But after speaking with a wide range of black voters, what I've heard is that racial tension is the big topic that keeps coming up. I kind of feel like it's a lot going on. It's kind of scary. Um, and being that I have kids, so I'm just hoping today, after today, a little, a little changes. We interviewed a political activist named Mika Gadsden, who says she was born to Jim Crow refugees. She says she recently asked her father if the racial tension we're seeing today is similar to what he experienced decades ago, but his answer was unexpected. He actually surprised me and said that this is unlike some of the things he saw growing up. I said, well, I said, pops, like, You've seen the Klan in action. He said yes, but that was typically under the shadow of night. You didn't know who, what, when, or where. He feels like, he feels as if it's more blatant, more brazen now. Trudy Grant is a senior consultant for the Conference of National Black Churches. She's actually been organizing drivers to get people to the polls today. She says what happened to George Floyd and so many other innocent people of color really impacted the political views of the black community this election season. That happen in the front of the world. So it's not as if we're making up that there's police brutality. We don't have to make it up. You all saw it. What I heard from every person of color I talked to is that the hate crimes need to stop. They just want to see some change in the next four years. In Charleston, South Carolina, I'm Elizabeth Ruiz reporting. I'm Elizabeth Ruiz, keeping an eye on the U.S. Senate race between Senator Lindsey Graham and Jamie Harrison. Now, experts say there's a lot of national attention with this race because Republican Senator Lindsey Graham has been in office since 2003, but Democrat Jamie Harrison has a fighting chance. State Senator Marlon Kimson says Harrison beat a record by raising the most money ever earned by a U.S. Senate candidate. Who would have ever thought that an African-American uh, from a deep red state uh, would outraise uh, his opponent uh, and raise a sum of $100 million and lead in the polls. State Senator Kimson says Harrison would like to expand access to affordable health care and take on criminal justice reform. On the other hand, Senator Graham is known in the state for his advocacy of a strong national defense and aggressive interventionalist foreign policy. We uh, look to Senator Graham uh, for a level of calmness, a, le a reasonable and principled uh, approach, particularly when he was uh, palling around with Senator John McCain. Uh, we look to those two Republicans to be truly bipartisan and advocate for their respective states. However, State Senator Kimson says U.S. Senator Graham has showed a very partisan approach since President Trump got elected. If Harrison takes the lead, Kimson says he will make history. The world quite frankly, is uh, in touch and in, in looking at this state to see if we will turn a new page in South Carolina history. And, and we have a vested interest in South Carolina because if we can flip this red state, we can go on uh, competitive races in Georgia uh, and in Mississippi and elsewhere. In South Carolina, I'm Elizabeth Ruiz reporting. I'm Elizabeth Ruiz with a closer look at the voice of the black community this election. Businesses downtown are boarded up for the potential of riots, depending on who takes the lead later tonight. Now, I spoke with both black Democrats and black Republicans, and what I found is that a majority of the black community is in favor of a Biden-Harris ticket. However, there is a group of conservatives who are rallying behind Trump, like community leader Jonathan Thrower. He's been one of the only Republican presidents that have talked straight to black America. Thrower says he believes limited government and fewer taxes benefits people of color. However, Democrat Tawana Tolbert disagrees. She says she wants a party that has her family and herself in their best interest, and she doesn't see that from the current administration. Racism is just there, like in front of our faces now, because they have someone in leadership who, who cond condones it. So it's like, OK. Let's go with it. Whoever wins the vote, Tolbert says she'd like to see a lot of attention put toward affordable housing nationwide. And we'll just have to see if any violence breaks out as the election results come in. In Charleston, South Carolina, I'm Elizabeth Ruiz reporting. I'm Elizabeth
Elizabeth Ruiz sharing the voice of the black community during this historic election. Now here at Charity Missionary Baptist Church, community organizers have been working so hard to make sure that 100% of their black community votes in this election. Trudy Grant, a senior consultant for the Conference of National Black Churches, says the vote is precious, powerful, and personal. She says having a voice through voting is a right her parents fought for. It's precious because it was paid for by blood. It's powerful because you only get one vote. The millionaire get one vote. Even if you don't have a dime, you have that same vote. And it's, um, it's personal because it's yours. As powerful as each vote is, independent voter K.J. Kearney says the black community cannot sway an election, so they need to unite with people of all races and backgrounds. We make up 13% of the population. Of eligible voters, we make up like eight. Right? Like, even if every single black person voted the same way, it's not up to us alone. Nonetheless, political activist Mika Gadsden says the voice of the black people needs to be heard because she says their ancestors were an essential part of the establishment of our country. She says she often visits a plantation nearby to reflect on all the enslaved who fought for the freedom of African Americans. The challenges that our ancestors fought is not the same challenges that I fight every day, but they've established a blueprint and they've taught us how to engage and how to fight for our rights. Gadsden says black voters have an opportunity to communicate their priorities when voting in an election. In Charleston, South Carolina, I'm Elizabeth Ruiz reporting. I'm Elizabeth Ruiz bringing you a comparison between young and old black voters. Now here in Charleston, I found there's actually quite a bit of unity between black voters of different generations. Both young adult and older voters seem to be in favor of Democrat Jamie Harrison taking the lead over Republican Senator Lindsey Graham in the U.S. Senate race. 65-year-old city councilor Perry Keith Waring says he's a fan of Harrison's youthful exuberance and he's ready for a change. Believe it or not, I have been a fan of, of Lindsey Graham for a lot of years. Uh, but it seems to me since John McCain died, he is not the moderate voice or somewhat independent thinking person that he once was. Young adult voter Tawana Tolbert is in her 30s. She says she would love for Harrison to take office because she says he's big on racial sensitivity and she's sick of race still being an issue in our country today. She says she doesn't believe Senator Graham is representing South Carolinians of color. I'm still just blown by the fact of, you know, his sarcastic comment he said of going back to the good old days of segregation. And that's, that's not a comment that sits well with me because I'm an African-American woman. I'm here, you know, and and I've, I've, I've been fortunate enough to be a part of a lot of groups and just social events in Charleston that has been very diverse. Young adult voter K.J. Kearney, who's also in his 30s, says it's clear Harrison understands the voice of all people. I think the thing that he does understand is black people are not a monolith. You know, there are conservative black people, there are liberal black people, there are, you know, all types. And I think he sees the humanity in us and will accept us as the totality of blackness and not just the black bloc that voted for him or didn't vote for him. Coming up in the next hour, we'll be going into this election watch party to give you the latest on the U.S. Senate race results. In South Carolina, I'm Elizabeth Ruiz reporting. I'm Elizabeth Ruiz giving you the latest on the U.S. Senate race between Republican Senator Lindsey Graham and Democrat Jamie Harrison. Now, we just got word from the Associated Press that Senator Lindsey Graham has, in fact, secured the spot for the Senate. I'm here with political strategist Radia Baxter here in Charleston. Radia, what can you tell us about these results? Uh, so, uh, we've been told that the uh, percentage point of, of Graham winning was 10 percent. Uh, we are extremely disappointed. Um, again, we put a lot of resources as far as fundraising people, young people would galvanize a collective different demographic to ensure that um, Harrison would win. But just because he didn't win, that doesn't mean that we're not fighting or that we won't continue the fight um, for our future, but just means that this is, we still have work to do. We still have work to do to make sure collectively that everybody's included in this process. Yeah, for sure. Can you explain why this race was so influential for you guys? Why you were pushing for Jamie Harrison so much? Because Jamie Harrison brought together everyone. It didn't matter what kind of level, what, it didn't matter the levels, class levels, race, anything. He brought together everybody for one cause, and that's the power in the people. 
the power with the vote, and which is at the adverse of Graham, but we wanted to make sure that everybody was included so that way we can move on to the next step. All right, well, thank you so much, Radia. And actually, uh, a lot of the black community is kind of shocked with these results because Harrison actually out fundraised uh, Le Senator Lindsey Graham. But in South Carolina, I'm Elizabeth Ruiz reporting. I'm Elizabeth Ruiz, giving you the perspective of the black faith community this election. Right now, I'm actually standing outside Mother Emanuel Church. It's the oldest African Methodist Episcopal Church in the Southern United States. Members say it's of sacred value because it's one of the few congregations that started before slavery ended. But in recent history, it's known as a location of a racist hate crime. A white supremacist murdered nine people as they were concluding their Bible study five years ago. Senior Pastor Shakur Francis of New Hope United Methodist Church says the black community persevered like it always does. There was a lot of shock initially, but one thing I just love about Charleston and I love about the African American faith community, we came together. Um, there was an, any mention of any violence, um, um, revenge. We literally just came together in solidarity as a community, as a people, as a city. Um, and we vowed that hate would not win and that love would um, prevail and it did. He says within a matter of days, they made sure that worship was held the Sunday following the massacre. He says regardless of who takes office, he's praying our political leaders can get us to come together and unite as Americans. No matter who's elected tonight, God is still on the throne. God is truly still on the throne. And regardless of who's elected tonight, Republican or Democrat, we have to respect the wishes of the people. And we must truly pray for our leaders that they will listen to the will of God and respect the dignity and the humanity of all peoples so that we could be a better nation and collectively be a better world. No matter what happens, Pastor Francis says the black community will be resilient. In Charleston, South Carolina, I'm Elizabeth Ruiz reporting. I'm Elizabeth Ruiz giving you the reaction of the black community with what we know so far in election results. Associated Press has confirmed Lindsey Graham secured a fourth term in the Senate. Many people of color say they're disappointed, but State Senator Marlon Kimson says he's focusing on the positive. He's already won because he's given so many kids who look like me and him uh, inspiration to go on to higher heights. As we wait to see who will have the next four years in the Oval Office, Charleston community leader Jonathan Thrower says he thinks the economy would be in better shape with President Trump. I'd be nervous if Biden becomes president. Um, one of the things I'd be nervous about is how will he handle the economy during COVID. That's going to be my major concern. No matter who takes the lead, community organizer Trudy Grant says the black community will continue to fight for equality. Back in fight mode. Well, and it, 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 it won't stop with any of them being in office because there are still some disparities um, that we have to fight for. So if we just have to fight harder with one, then we'll have to fight with the other. Above all else, Pastor Shakur Francis says we need to be good to each other moving forward. Evaluate for yourself and decide for yourself that you're going to be a good person. Now we just have to be patient as we wait for the final results to come in. In Charleston, South Carolina, I'm Elizabeth Ruiz reporting.